YouTube family. What's good with you? It's your boy 2A in LA. And as always, fam, anything I say in this episode, prior episodes, and future episodes, it's just my personal opinion. Don't take it as fact. Don't take it as law. Always do your own homework and come up with your own conclusions. Right about now, fam, I should go ahead and tap that like button for your boy. If you're new to the channel, I want to say welcome. Come on in. You can join the congregation by smashing that subscribe button and requesting all post notifications. And if you are an existing supporter of this channel, fam, I appreciate you more than you can possibly imagine. You are the reason this channel is anything. All right, let's get this rolling, fam. Look, we have a battle of the Titans today. Look, fam, I've got a lot of fantastic uh, pistols in my collection. Some of the best on YouTube. These two guns, though, are going to rank right up there at the top. To date, at the time I'm shooting this, these are the two highest rated pistols in my collection based on my uh, review. Now, a lot of that has to do with the quality of the guns or the way the gun shoots I should say uh, but there are other factors that come into play too as well but still regardless both of these guns are 90 and above in terms of my rating system and as you guys know that 90 in my rating system is a tough nut to crack and of course I am talking about none other than the Atlas Erebus let me just let you peruse this sexy beast right here look they atlas knows how to put together a gun and the Erebus is the height of their construction and of course i'm also talking about none other than the terror and tactical sand viper this gun is just gorgeous straight gorgeous there is no if ands or buts about it so let's get into it let's let's dive into uh these guns so uh i'll start off with and this is really about which gun is better right so i'll start off with the Erebus. look fit and finish on the Erebus is amazing you've got the look <laughs> the tolerances are crazy and somehow atlas you know and they've been doing this for a while they've certainly had the opportunity and the time to master their craft somehow atlas is able to get incredibly tight tolerances but buttery smooth <laughs> buttery smooth and it was like look fam it's better now because i've got way more around but when i got it day one it was buttery smooth and so you have to admire that right i've said it once i said it a million times nothing better than an atlas trigger mm. That's a sub two pound trigger, y'all. It's man. Atlas really does their things. Incredible internals, incredible uh, uh, coating. No, this gun is phenomenal. And when you talk about accuracy, fam, I'll put up some footage of me shooting it. But look, fam, it's man, literally, you know, I can never shoot the quality of the gun, but if I'm in a good zone, I mean, it's the same hole. Even when I throw a shot, uh, throwing a shot is centimeters off the same hole. I mean, look, man, this gun is crazy fast shooting. Arguably the fastest gun uh, in my collection. Arguably the fastest gun that I've ever shot. It is amazing. Now, some people feel like, I think that the Erebus is a very attractive gun. Some people, though, will say that, you know, because it's got that big, huge uh, comp on the front with, uh, with that sight block, that it's not as attractive, it's not as sleek, it's not as stylish uh, as they would like it to be. It's a little bit too long, a little bit too big, and I'll put up the specs there. It's a heavy weighted gun, but to me, that's what makes it such an incredible shooter. You've got that side block on the front with that huge comp and that smooth buttery slide and that crazy trigger. And it just allows you to acquire your targets and it just stay, it just doesn't move. And it cycles so fast. And so look, fam, 
the, the, the Arab is, is unbelievable. Now, let's get into the Sand Viper because one thing that you cannot accuse uh, the Sand Viper of is not being aesthetically pleasing. This gun is beautiful. They have done the color and the coating is striking. I don't know if it's picking up on camera the way it does in person, but if you've ever seen one up close, I mean, this copper color is unbelievable. And let me to do it this way. You can see the slant there. Now keep in mind, your guide rod is there. So the internals, the manufacturing, the aesthetics of the gun, the machining, also, hey, buttery smooth buttery smooth was like that the first day i got it certainly terran tactical being one of the best shooters on the planet appreciates that look at this trigger very little take up clear defined wall crisp clean break look at the reset uh what man <laughs> this gun has won multiple uh competitions already look this pistol is incredible now a lot of what people criticize terran for and the one flaw I think the gun has is that it has a polymer grip. Now, it feels in incredible in the hand. It is a pleasure to shoot. Make no mistake about that. But aesthetically, it's the one part of the gun that I feel is a little bit lacking. Um, I feel for the price point, you could have put a higher quality uh, metal grip on it. The, 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 the pushback that Taryn gives is, keep in mind, uh, Taryn is a competition shooter, and this is made to be a competition gun. And so he likes the lighter weight. You know, when you're running a competition, it makes a lot of sense from that perspective versus the weekend warrior who wants, you know, a gun, uh, a, a super nice gun for plinking. So I get that. So there's some give and take that relative to that. The main criticism of this gun is what you get for the price. And because, okay, you got the polymer grip, there should probably be a little bit of grace given uh, relative to the price. But I'll put the MSRP for uh, the Sand Viper up there. And I'll also put the MSRP for the Erebus. Um, and you'll see that the Sand Viper, the Sand Viper is more expensive than the Erebus, despite the fact that the Erebus has an all metal grip and, you know, from in many ways is probably a better constructed firearm. Um, like I said, Atlas has a long history of constructing guns. Terran, though, has an eye on aesthetics and style uh, that I don't think, I'm not saying Atlas doesn't consider style, but I think they are, uh, you know, kind of function over style. Um, that style is kind of secondary, secondary to them. And I think, you know, Cam wants his gun to run, run. <laughs> uh, but he's also very in tune to style because a lot of his guns are used in movies, specifically the John Wick series. And so a lot of people will say the materials used to construct this gun are, are such that this gun should probably not be at the $7,000 range. They should probably be more like uh, $6,000 or something like that, 5,500 to 6,000, somewhere in there. To that, I would say the gun is worth whatever people are willing to pay for. So I don't criticize Taryn for um, pricing his guns where he prices them. The same way I don't criticize Atlas when they raise the prices on all their guns uh, at the at the beginning of 2024. Look, if, if, if you price your guns at what is perceived overpriced at $7,000, right? If they're overpriced, why are they all sold out? Why can't you get your hands on one? Why, when you do get your hands on one, uh, retailers are selling it for three, four thousand dollars over <laughs> over MSRP. 
So obviously there is no lack of demand for this product. Obviously there is a, val a perceived value in the marketplace that allows Taryn to price his guns where he prices them. And I'm not mad at him for that. The same way I think this is why Atlas raised its prices because it was like, man, for the quality that we produce, we can charge more and we're not going to lose demand in the marketplace. That's just economics 101. That's capitalism 101. If you guys are upset about that, then I don't know. Would you rather have a communist country where you don't have, you can't get a hold of these? What? What do you want? <laughs> Fun. I want these. That's what I want. So I'm not mad about the price. But this is not about are the guns uh, priced accordingly. This is more about which one is the better gun. And like I said, from an aesthetics perspective, I think Taryn has the Erebus beat. Just strictly based on looks. Both of these guns are incredible shooter. Both of them are incredibly accurate. Um, you can't go wrong either way. But if I could only choose one, if I could only choose one, which one would I choose? I'm not going to front y'all. Nothing. I haven't shot a gun better than the Erebus. It is just... The fastest, the most well-balanced, the smoothest, the best trigger, the most accurate gun I have ever shot. And I've shot pretty, I own damn near everything and have certainly shot damn near everything. And I haven't found a gun that's better. Now, maybe if you start getting into race guns, which I put in a different category than a typical 2011 pistol. I, one of the reasons why the Arabis I think is so dynamic is it is a kind of a hybrid pistol between what a race gun would be and what a standard 2011 pistol. And a lot of a lot of these guns kind of like the, I'd say the Sand Viper is like that, the Staccato XC is like that, the Phoenix Trinity H series are like that, but none of them do it like this, y'all. None of them do it better than the Erebus. Facts. All facts, no cap. All right? All right, fam, look, that's it for this episode. Until next time, as always, I want you guys to take care of one another and peace.